so let's start. I'm going to go ahead. This is the front end of the software. I'm going to get into the back office and reporting after this. Um, we have a time card for the employees to clock in and out. And uh, we give access cards for the employees to slide on the card reader so they clock in that way. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm going to click on time card again. And it asks for employee password. So at this point, it's where you slide the um, employee card, or you can just type the password. If you don't want to use the cards, you don't have to. You can just type an, a password to clock in. Got it. Okay, so it says the time, and then you clock in. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to explain cash here in. So this activates the cash drawer uh, every morning um, or every beginning of every shift. So every time you see this logging, that's where you need to input employee password or uh, slide your employee access card. So the system allows you access to the software. Let's click on cash trade terminal one. And over here, um, we're going to say how much we're going to start for the day in these boxes. You can itemize all the bills that you're going to start with, or uh, you can simply just type the total amount um, on this bottom box where it says cash. So the drawer opens automatically, obviously, at this point, and when you click on finish, the system prints a report uh, with all the amounts entered. So that's all that needs to be done, and now we can go... Um, start making sales. So we're going to go over here, log in. And we have all the categories on the left and the items on the right hand side. You can have multiple screens with um, more categories. So if this screen gets full, you can just simply arrow down and it will take you down to the next page of categories and items. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on this by weight item, 899 per pound. So I have something on the scale already. So um, the system will tell you the total weight and at the bottom, based on the unit price, will give you the dollar, the total dollar amount to pay. Once it's re you're ready, just press OK. I'm going to select more items. Let's say popcorn. I'm going to say, let's go to ice cream. I know you serve ice cream as well. And for the ice cream, um, we have some selections that we need to make. So either the customer can say they want the ice cream and a regular ice cream, regular cone, or sugar cone. And if it's a single or double scoop, and the flavor of the ice cream. Now for the banana split, uh, there are a couple other different selections. Uh, so again, single or double flavor, uh, any toppings. So if they want all the toppings, they can simply just click on all the toppings. If they don't want any toppings, which is unlikely, they don't have to select any of those options. How hard is it to add and remove options? Like, is that something mm -hmm. we do on the back end? Or do Correct. you guys have to do it? Oh, yeah, it's done from the back end as part of your technical support. We can do that for you. I mean, we train you on the software. You're going to learn it. And uh, the back office is very simple. 
um, okay. very user friendly. Um, but if you don't have a time or you have too much work, I mean, you can always email us with your request. Say, I need these new flavors, these new sizes by tomorrow or by this time today, and we'll go ahead and do it for you. Okay, um, and then back to the weighted stuff. Can you go back to, like, the toffee? Can you override so the screen? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You mean, like... So can can the employee override what the weight is on that screen? Oh, for the weighted items? Uh -huh. No, they cannot because um, the scale uh, is integrated with the software, so they can alter the weight. So if I, okay. let's go to, um, let's see, where are my homemade items? Let's say it is... Okay, so over here you see this this the this is the weight right now. If I try to alter the weight, it doesn't let me click or type on anything. I can't change it to like you know let's say point one or whatever. I can't do that now. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's the that those are the weighted items, uh, simple items. Some of them will have some selections like the ice cream. Uh, so for the ice cream, um, I have for this one, let's see. So for example, a banana split, uh, customer changes their mind. They say they don't want um, maybe chocolate, they want strawberry instead. You can always go back to the modifiers and select a different flavor. Uh, we have cash and credit card options to accept payment at the bottom. You can also accept gift card payment and point payment if you do loyalty uh, rewards. So I'm going to just do cash for now. Uh, when you do cash, you accept the payment, it opens the drawer and it prints a receipt for a customer. You can also... Can I ask you a question? Yes. Can I ask a question? Look, down there on the right-hand side where it says customer, can you edit that? So could you put, like, Susie, and that Susie name would print on that receipt? Or can you – is there a number that gets printed on the receipt? Okay, like, I'm to sorry. be able to call, can you repeat like, the question one more time? Where, where you said where you see the customer information? Yeah, so right below amount due, it says $20, and then um, right below amount due it says customer. Can you edit yes. that box oh. and put, like, Susie right there, so it would print Susie's name on the receipt. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is this is actually um, this is for rewards program. Um, so you can search for a member for a customer. If you click on this man, um, so you need to have that person already in the system to search for somebody, or you need mm -hmm. to add them into the system. So you can type on that area, you have mm -hmm. to search for the customer. That means that if it's a first-time customer, you're going to add the customer, click on new, and get the customer details filled in. So from a, just real quick, from a point of sale standpoint, you finish this transaction and you do the banana split or make a milkshake or whatever, that's going to run to a receipt printer where the kitchen staff's going to make that product. What Brandy's asking is, are the receipts numbered, um, like maybe in a restaurant you would get number 15 or you could put your name on there like Starbucks, um, where the, the the person who's ringing the transaction isn't required to remember who's who ordered what items. Does that make sense? The kitchen person down the road mm -hmm. is going to make the ice cream with two scoops and then call out who it's for. Does the, does mm -hmm. the receipt have the capability oh. of knowing yes. to be able to do that? Oh, yeah, of course you can do it. Um, in that case, yeah, we wouldn't do it that, this way. Um, we can actually add a button here on the bottom that's called customer information. And what that does, it's basically a note for the receipt. So that note, yeah, it will print on a receipt. And um, Kitchen Memo works as well. Um, so this Kitchen Memo over here, you 
just type the, the person's customer name, customer name, Mary. So this, this will print in the kitchen, they will know um, who's this going to be for. Uh, so you can, that yes, you can use kitchen memo or we can also add the customer information button too for those instructions or notes. For, um, okay. Um, also, you can um, apply discounts to a transaction. So if I go to discount, this is an optional screen. Um, it's saying why we're applying the discount. We can skip this. This doesn't have to show if you don't want to. It can just go straight to this uh, if you want to apply a discount only to one item or to the entire order. Usually when they give a discount, they apply a discount to one item only. But you got to select which item you want to apply the discount to, let's say for the ice cream. Uh, so this is in case somebody brings like a coupon or maybe you have a coupon and, and it's just for the ice cream. Um, we will have that discount added. It can be called the name of the coupon, uh, $1 off or Groupon, whatever it is, just select it. And the system would apply the discount to that item. So only to the ice cream, 20% off. Um, also, this menu search, this is if you have so many items and new employees, they can use this tool. They can simply just type a name, uh, name of an item. So they don't have to go to every category and try to find that item. They can simply type the name of the item and select it. So this screen is very simple. It's very self-explanatory, as you can see. Any questions? So far. Yeah, um, so like on the cheese popcorn, you went and found it, and there was a mm -hmm. item number yes. associated with it, the 101015 or whatever. Does that print on the receipt, and can it be on? This is a it... barcode, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is a barcode. So this is if you do not want to manually search for the item on the system or select uh -huh. it you could simply just scan it with a barcode scanner. Um, Which that is, does that come provided or is it aftermarket? Uh, no, we provide them of course. So those are our barcode scanners. Um, so it's a USB barcode scanner gun. Uh -huh. That's just okay. gonna sit next to your POS system. So if somebody brings a lot of items and um, they all have barcodes, you should be scanning them in that case, not f trying to find them on the menu because it's faster scanning. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, all right, let me show you how issuing gift cards work. Uh, issuing gift cards, we got to go to the oh, main Hold on, screen. hold on real quick. Um, Julie, you're on, right? I am. Is Dane with you? He He is listening in. Um, any questions from from you guys on understanding the store level on that stuff? I mean, it, yeah. it, this is my simple. my concern is the um, so the receipt and the order that's printing. Mm -hmm. If that's concerning to me, um, the time it's going to take to go in and type that person's name when you mm -hmm. have it out the door, and then what's going to keep track of Mary came before Fred? as right. the conclusion of all of those re um, orders are printing off. Right. So the, the kitchen tickets, um, they do print the time on them. You're going to okay. see the time and the name okay. of the person. So you that will know who came question. first, okay. of course. So yes. there, it'll, and it'll receipt not number too. Yeah. Okay. It will have a receipt number. It will say customer name, time the order was placed. Okay. Okay, yes. good. Okay. Um, all right. So issuing gift cards, The we go to the main screen. The reason for that is because you're simply at this point just activating a gift card. So um, we're, the customer is still not buying anything with a gift card. So we're going to go ahead and buy a gift card right now. You can uh, issue one card at a time or you can do multiple cards at the same time. 
let's do one gift card for five dollars for example so you type in the amount you grab a new gift card and slide the card on the card reader and the system will populate the numbers on the screen like this and then simply accept cash or credit card to finalize the payment I'm assuming you will be doing store gift cards, correct? No, I'm sure you probably already uh, We have. will, but they currently have an existing platform they use for gift cards. So there's going to be, I don't call it um, whatever, $40,000 worth of existing gift, gift cards from another company. Do you have the ability to populate those into your system mm -hmm. if you have the information? Yes, we can. We can um, add your customer database. Um, for gift cards and um, if you have loyalty as well. Yeah, uh, we will just need customers' names, phone numbers. It, do you, I don't know if you take that information, phone numbers, but some, or... I, I don't know how their system works. I mean, oh, I'm not 100% okay. sure. Dane, do you know if it captures that stuff or is it just a, a price no, on the card? It's just a number. We don't keep any data on the customers. So, 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 our customers assign just a number, like a, a store number. I'm sorry, a gift card number. Let's say three, two, one, four, and but there is no name attached to it, right? Correct. Okay, that works. That's that's fine. So if you don't have a name, it's okay. Um, just numbers that will work as well. And also, we will need the balances, of course how much each card has, you know. Okay. All right, let me just finalize that. So that was a gift card and I paid with cash $5. And over here, it's just asking, um, do you want to print a receipt or not? If you do, you click receipt print. If you do not, just press OK to continue. It wouldn't print the receipt. So now, somebody gets a gift card that you should give it to somebody else and that person comes to the store then they can use it they can quick serve and just ring up the customer um by the way i know you uh asked ryan uh how the weighted items uh show on the customer side so our system has a 10 by 10 lcd customer display um, so when you select an item here like this, what the customer sees on their screen is basically uh, this area, this receipt portion. So they see the name of the item and they will see if it's a weighted item. Let's select something by weight. They will see the weight of the item and the, to the unit price and the total amount do so that's what they see on their customer screen i'm sure you'll get to this part on the inventory part of this conversation but from a tracking standpoint if we have you know 50 kinds of, of resale candy um, or 30 kinds of chocolate clusters when we're ringing a customer in to to account for you know red jelly beans and blue gummy bears um, when you put them on the scale mm -hmm. you would put them on, push the button, populate it, and then take them off? Or will you be able to leave them all in one bag and leave a running total going? Yeah, you can just leave them all in the bag. I mean, um, when they, so, so they're all, I mean, they can have different type of candies in one bag, right? Right. So the system will just know the weight. It will not know if it was, chocolate clusters and jelly beans and um, uh, you know, something so else. So you would have to weigh them individually, empty no. the scale, and start over again? No, you don't have to. So if somebody has two bags or three or more, you can put them all on the scale at the same time. Will I be able to run a report after the transaction and show me by candy selected what, what's been sold? Yes. So, okay. 
yeah so so if it's you know uh, if it's uh, if 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 they if if it if each candy has a different price then you obviously will need to weigh each bag separately but um if it's candy that they can just mix and match and just get whatever they want then you can do it all at the same time the ones that are being weighted separately then yes in the back office you will know um that item was purchased what what was the weight of the item what was the uh the unit price but for these other candies that are mix and match type of candy and they all have the same price you're not really going to know i mean if if it's if it was jelly beans and if it was uh chocolate bars and uh and everything else you know, the system there's there's no way for a system to know that uh the system just goes by the weight uh unless you ring it up separately and you give the customer different bags then yes but those different bags you can put them all on, on the scale at the same time but if the price changes on each candy then then you have to do it separately because you know then um you're not going to get the same dollar amount for them Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let me go back to the main screen um, and show you the rest of the functions here. We also have deposit and withdrawal. So what deposit does, this allows you to add more change into the cash drawer. So it, if at some point they're running low in change, let's say in quarters and pennies, the manager can use this function and quickly add, let's say, a dollar fifty in quarters to the drawer. And the same goes for withdrawal. So um this is to just take money out of the cash drawer. If you uh, need to take money out at some time of the day, every day, the manager can go here and just take that cash out of the cash drawer. Okay. Now, this tender open orders, what this is, it's a manager function that allows you to see if Somebody attempted to accept payment, and they did not finalize an order. So any open orders will go on this screen. It will have a receipt number, and you will be able to see uh, what what they were trying to ring up, and they just did not. They stopped. They they pressed cash or tender, but they stopped. The, co the employee stopped for some reason. Uh, maybe the customer left, maybe the customer said they didn't have enough money, they were going to come back, the customer never came back. So that's an open order, open orders go here. Now, uh, I know you do events like weddings and things like that. So this event catering function can be useful if you accept a deposit prior to the event or for a large order. This function allows you to um, get customer information and accept a deposit. So over here, uh, you type the customer information. Or if this is a repeated customer, you can simply just search for the customer. You don't have to type in their details. You fill all this in. Uh, let's see. I think I had an account already here. So just type information. You can title the event if you need to, just for reference. And if it's delivery or pickup, you get a calendar to um, select when this order needs to be ready. So let's say that's for Sunday and a time.
and then you click order and you're taken to to your menu so you can uh, select all the items for this future event you can use the quantity button because usually this type of orders or events they're gonna order a lot of items so you can say they're gonna order a hundred of let's go over here of this type of items So you don't have to just individually click one by one ten times that same item. You can just put the quantity in, select the item, just one line. It gives you the total amount due. So that's the catering order. If you need to use it, that's what that does. Just large orders or events. Um, this recall function is this function. As this is where you can see all sales of the day. I have made just one sale today. You can check past days, so you can say yesterday or last month and this is a manager function because over here you can see you can void uh, a transaction void all the items in one transaction or you can process a refund either partial or full refund Now this last function, this is cash drawer. It's, all this does is allows you to just pop the drawer open to give change to a customer. If you want just the manager to be able to do this, we can just give leave, uh, give the manager access to it. Everybody else would not be able to get in here and do it. So if somebody is going to go in and cancel a transaction or give it a refund, is there a spot where they have to make an explanation of why they've done that? Yes, there is. When you go, when you so this is this these are transactions that uh, were already paid. Um, so if for some reason there's a problem on that order, and they need to process a refund during the refund process. The system will, yes, it actually requires you to type a reason why you're applying the refund. Okay. You can't so you, um, uh, continue okay. without and it a reason. And it will attach itself to that employee. I'm sorry? It will attach itself to the employee of the login number. Correct, exactly. So it will say that, yeah, so this refund is processed under uh, okay. Mary, let's say. Whoever logs in to recall and does that refund, that's the person that will, the, the back office will show that that person processed that refund. Okay. That's why that login function, uh, that login window is for. Okay, so that's the front end. Uh, so everything here is very simple, very self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and log into the back office, the store management. So you have the back office available via um, browser, and the browser that's recommended to use is Google Chrome. You are given a login and password to log into the back office. First thing you see is the home page with a summary of sales. Over here on the top, today sales or this week or this month. So I understand there are different locations. Um, I have added uh, three stores here. So we have HQ and we have two other stores. 
um, so if you need to manage the factory you will click on the factory if you need to manage this other store Sun River for example you click on that store and you're taken to that store management on the left we go to the settings and here we have basic settings like employee management and menu management a real quick question on that um, individually by location are you able to um, so say we have a store manager at the Sun River location and they need access to back of the house are they going to be able to see the whole company information or can you by login screen them to only Sun River Correct. We can assign different security levels for um, a manager. So a store manager wouldn't be allowed to see other stores' information or make modifications. Now, from this Great. back office, we yeah we we can give different permissions. So let's go to employee management and over here. We can create different employee groups, like you can have cashiers and um, just mm -hmm. back people uh, and stuff like that. So you, every level, each group has different um, security. So someone that, that does not, an employee that doesn't use the POS system, so for example, somebody that just comes and just, it's, is not a cashier, they would just be able to clock in only, for example. So adding an employee is very simple. Just click new and fill in employee details. First name, last name, other information if needed, phone number. Assign a password and here you can assign their security level also, um, if you want to keep a record of payroll, you can assign that employee's pay rate here. So based on the employee's hours and their pay rate, that's how, that's how you get a payroll report. We also have uh, a schedule. Uh, you can create a schedules for employees, and the schedule can be created in advance. So if you want to create a schedule, let's say a month in advance, you can. So over here, you, you will see all the employees who, and you just, just select the ones that you want to create a schedule for, uh, go to that day, and just select the time for that day. So we're right here, we're, we're for, it's for today, so if it's in advance, you will have to just say um, another date, say the 14. and the start the time that the employee is going to start work and the time the employee is going to leave do you have the ability to create and save templates for um for weeks that where you can just drag and drop and once you create an employee um do you have the ability to just kind of drag and drop them um you no, so, you, you so, can upload templates, but if the let's say this week is the same for the next week, you can copy the previous week. That's what you can do here. Um, but you have to do it every time you make that schedule ahead of time. Okay. 
So schedules are exported via Excel, and then you can print them and give them to your employees. Now, the menu management, it's very simple, adding items. So um, adding items, simply go to menu setup. You see a layout of the menu. If you want to add something, just go to that category. You click on any available square, and this is where you fill in uh, item information. So let's say you want to add a new chocolate, just type the name. The price. You can type in the additional information like your cost, um, unit, inventory unit, for example, if it's going to be pound or each, and then assign a color to that item. Can you do this function for uh, like all stores at once, or if you had an item, would you have to go into all three stores individually and do this for each button? Um, you can do it individually, yes. Um, but when you create an item from the headquarters, it will show to the other stores. Well, this is something that before we configure the uh, the menu, that's the decision that needs to be made. So basically, if all your stores share the same menu and items, that means that all uh, whatever is created from the HQ, all the other stores will see them. But if each store will have different menu items, then those, those menu items will have to be added individually from each store. Got it. So that's the way you add an item. All that needs to be done on the POS system, all you got to do is restart the software, though, because it will not show immediately. Um, the database needs to sync with the cloud so it knows that you added this item or made this change, if you want it immediately. Yep. Customer information, customer database. Um, so if you do rewards programs, uh, you can sign people up from the back office. Some stores, they give a sheet of paper to a customer and they have them fill in their details. Then later on, the manager goes in the back office and adds that customer from here. That's what this is for. Okay. <laughs> Also, if you wanted to check on uh, points and things like that, you can search by customer, by name, and card number. You can also create coupons um, and send them from the back office to your uh, customers. So the customer will get it's an email um, from you. It will say, you know, something maybe a discount or it might be a birthday coupon or whatever it is um, that they can redeem a store. That that email will contain a barcode that they can present at the store and you can simply scan it and apply the discount that way. Now let's go to the sales report. So this is one section of sales reports. Uh, this is another section for sales reports. This other section is a little more detailed. Um, so over here we have daily sales report, detailed sales, sales by hour, 
uh, sales by type of item sold. So let's go daily sales report, which is the report most people access. So let's go over here. We can search for a period. You can search for all the stores, or if you wanted just to see data just for one particular store, let's say Sunriver, you will just have to click that one. But this is if, if you're logged in under the factory, of course. So if the manager from Sunriver access can can only access Sunriver, they will not be able to see the other stores, obviously. So this is all the information this report shows. Any discounts given, total unit price, tax collected, total amount of the transaction, if it was cash, it was paid with credit card or gift card uh, payment or point payment. Every single report you see can be exported to Excel. All these tabs contain reports. We have more rep reports over here. Uh, they're more specific, like I said, more detailed hourly sales, uh, uh, hourly sales by 15 minutes. By type of item, that would be this one volume by um, item type. So this actually tells you the, the items that were sold during that period. We also have this other report here um, is called labor versus sales. So if you want to know what's your cost of labor versus your sales, this is a report to look for. You gotta just, it, it just goes per that day. Um, so this is usually if uh, if the sales are low and they, this is a way to determine if you need to, um, maybe give a, uh, an employee a day off or send the employee home, go home early. This is the report that can help you to determine to make that decision. These are other reports. So this is discount reports, uh, void refund uh, reports, tax reports. This is a uh, history report. So if you want to know somebody has recently changed a price at another store and who did, you can access these reports to see that information. Employee reports, uh, just sales, uh, employee sales data. If somebody has canceled an order, we have canceled reports too. These are now, over here, this is just settings. This is just settings to configure the software. This area, we're probably not gonna use it. It's gonna be just for us to customize the software. Um, now, inventory tools, we have them here at the bottom. Okay, so if inventory lookup. So this is, allows you to see what you currently have in inventory. And because I'm a, I, I, I clicked or selected factory store, by default it's selecting that store, but you can, uh, if you are at the factory, 
if you want to know their inventory, you just go to that store and um, search for that store. So we click search to see what we currently have on the inventory. So for inventory, all the items, all the ingredients will need to be added. So uh, whatever you will need to keep track of, um, our software uh, can do real-time inventory. What that means is as you sell, the system will uh, update the inventory. So if you sell, um, let's say, taffy, banana taffy, all the ingredients that are for that item will be uh, updated and deducted from the inventory. But we need to add all those items here. So as you can see what we have on hand, um, the unit, it's currently pound here, but every item can have a different um, unit, of course, ounce or uh, whatever it is, gallon or liter. So this is what, what we have available. <laughs> What options do you have for um, levels and like real, I see reorder point on there. Is there a, a auto automated notification when it gets to a certain level that we can tell it, you know, when it's below whatever, two pounds or mm -hmm. 50 ounces or whatever, that it, it alerts us mm -hmm. somehow to tell us to order more? Okay. Automatic notification for inventory, no. But the system can handle uh, restock level and reorder. So, but you have to go and check if if you're running low. Um, but there is no automatic notifications that are going to pop up when you log into a back office or on the POS system. No, um, you have to go to inventory lookup. You will have to come over here and check. So we have these two columns here. Um, so for example. Uh, the lowest le point you're gonna if you get to 40, at that point you gotta reorder and the uh, the units that you need to reorder will need to be 20. Uh, so that you yeah you have to check um, this reporting order to see that. Let me show you the other tools for inventory. Um, uh, I'm sure she's going to do some more stuff. Julie, do you have any questions about that kind of stuff, this, this section? Um, no, I'm not sure how. Yeah, no. I, I don't know how that, so we'll just have a warehouse category as far as what's in our warehouse. You could also do that. Um, so, But that still need, will need to be done manually. So if you want to just say um, you get... Um, let's say 30 pounds of sugar today, and you want to know how much you have in five days. You can you can add those five pounds, I mean 30 pounds of sugar here by doing mm -hmm. like a purchase order. And in five days, you will have to just come back and you're obviously going to have less. So if you had in five days, 10 pounds, you will have to edit that amount. Um, and just keep track of it that way. Okay. That's another way of how we can do it inventory. But the other, the, the way I explained before, that's real time inventory based on the sale. So as as you sell, it's deducting from inventory every single ingredient and in every item. Now, okay. when you receive a a shipment from your supplier. Basically, what you gotta do is adjust the inventory. You gotta add on to your inventory. So there's no way to scan it in. We just have to manually add it on. Um, yeah. So you have to add manually every item that you're receiving. So mm -hmm. or every order. I mean, every shipment. So you click new. Okay. And add that item.
yeah you will have to have um so for the for adding inventory you have to have the inventory set up for all the stores of course so each store is going to have different inventory um so that have will have to be added individually from each store um even if you do it from the HQ um that's just because every store can have different inventory they can start with different amounts or receive different amounts um, and you can transfer from store to store yes you can do that so you can use the inventory in and out function this one here so if you are the factory you're supplying the other stores You can say you're gonna transfer out some to another store. You can also select the day if you're doing today. Um when you transfer out inventory, that store receives the request immediately, but it doesn't add to that store's inventory immediately. Of course not. Somebody has to log into the back office, the manager. They go into inventory request, uh, and, the, and they're going to see the request there from the factory here. So you're going to see a line with a request. So that needs to be done manually. So someone has to see it and then that accept it and then it could be added to let's say Sun River. At that point it will be added to Sun River. So yeah, you can transfer out inventory from the factory to the other stores, but the other store has to log in and see it and accept the request and that way it's added to their inventory. So, um, and I'm, uh, you don't have to show me, but I assume there's, um, this will populate into some inventory reports somewhere on here that can show us transfer reports and purchase orders and things like that. Um, there are inventory tools here that, so some of them are just available in that section. So let me show you over here if we go back to sales reports So because an inventory pretty much what you what you what you want to see what is it that exactly that you want to see i mean um a report of like a history of requests or transfers and things like that yep yeah so so when you create transfer outs and requests uh -huh. to receive re uh inventory they actually they they do remain in the inventory tools um the records remain there uh let's see here I don't think there is a, re a specific report for that but Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, we, we, when you create anything that's related to inventory, pretty much that stays in here. Um, so you would, you transfer out. Yeah, the records remain here. Um, so you can see the number of times that you have added um, or done a transfer out. Those records are going to remain mm -hmm. in this section. There's no particular report, though, that will tell you like a history of transfer outs and and you, but you won't be able to do like this, like Excel or anything like that. The record is there. Um, I have to. I don't see that option right now. It may maybe I have it disabled. I'm not sure. Let me. I'm gonna have to actually ask development team and see if they have. You you like can that. check and get back with us, and we can finish up. I'm sure everybody's got a lot to do. So. Okay. I'm going to ask one one more question, and then I do have to go. So um, will this give us the ability, I'm going to use a scenario because that's the best way I know how to explain it. If um, we have ordered popcorn oil, we're running low, it's time to order more, and our supplier can't get it to us for three weeks. Is there a way I can go look at the history of the stores and see when they were delivered their last full bucket so I can determine if that's a disaster or not? Yeah, so so when they get something, when they get a new shipment, they have to add it here. They have to adjust it immediately. Or So you're going to see that record. You're going to have those records listed. You're going to see when that was received. Okay. Under adjustments. Okay. They remain here. They don't disappear. So you see the dates there, and you can see the details, what was received. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, any other questions from the back office? Um, I don't. Okay, um, all right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I mean, um, sorry, there was a little bit of delay, but I think the connection was pretty good so far for everybody, right? Um, yep. It wasn't too slow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, and we hope to work with you. Okay. Thank right. you. Have a good one. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.